Um, I'll make this one as you. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. The elevator is where Sugumi is, right? I'm kind of interested in that. Let's start there. Visitor elevator. Here to the next corridor on the next corner in the corridor and on the left. I went in the fat far door, which was open. Huh? Where am I? This is where uh, Sugumi was in the other pathway as well. I've been aiming for the elevator, but wound up somewhere else. Are you just stupid? Bad with directions? Wow. All kinds of bad qualities with you, Takeshi. All kinds of new bad qualities I didn't even realize you had. Sign said quail. I had no clue what that meant. Reading the explanation, I learned that this was a, gon a gondola in the shape of a jellyfish. I wasn't particularly in the mood for a ride. I checked to see that there was no damage to the floors and the walls and left. Oh. The elevator was next to the jellyfish. What? The hell was the point of that? I'm now trying to figure out what the point of that was. Well, I moved my glasses around because I just finished one glass of water. Um, that's weird. Jellyfish. Um, question mark. Maybe that's going to have a super hidden purpose that's going to come back in the end. Or maybe it's the start of showing that Takeshi's terrible at directions. Who knows? Oh, there's Sugumi. Oh, maybe subconsciously I just didn't want to run to her. Because <laughs> she's her bitch. Sugumi was standing there silently. She was in front of the closed elevator doors with a stern look on her face. This is where you were. Oh, and she looks a little bit perplexed, a little bit sexified. You want to talk, baby? Oh, now she's like, she looks like a bitch again. Oops. We triggered her bitch mode. Looked like Sugumi had noticed me, but she didn't reply. Her eyes stayed fixed on the door. This elevator doesn't go to the surface. I was reading a nearby sign. <laughs> She probably knows that. She knows all about it. She still seems like she might be a fucking terrorist or something. I don't know. She knows something. You know something! Nah. It says that, uh, to go to the floating island, Incel Null, we should use the elevator in the, end, in the center of the floor. It's not as simple as her knowing stuff from another pathway. Because even in the prologue, she seemed to know a bunch of stuff. Which, um, suggests that either A, she's from a timeline from before that, which is possible, but more likely, because I'd like to think the prologue could potentially take place at the very beginning of the timeline stuff, but more likely is that she just knows things. Maybe she's not a terrorist, but she knows things about the plan, I think. Anyways, uh, we should use the elevator in the center of the floor. The egg, uh, Eggman elevator. The Eggman is what I am. Ellipses. Sugumi, just standing there isn't going to make the elevator come. I I know that. I don't want the elevator. I don't need the elevator. I just need you. What? Oh, that's a bit soon. Nah, it's okay. I just didn't have as much exposure in the pathway. I'm, I'm hot and heavy right now. Sugumi finally answered me. Well, thanks. I know because I just saw it. Oh. Well, thanks. Saw what? Elevator. The elevator. Okay. As soon as she said that, she placed her hand on the closed elevator doors and started prying them open. Oh. Right, this is the one Maya was trapped in in the other pathway, I believe. The door was stopped half open. I thought it might be broken. It was half open because of used pen in the alternate pathway, question mark, if that's a thing that's connecting, maybe? So give me what's inside. See the elevator stopped on the third floor? Scared I peeked in. Oh, that's the one we rode down in? Is it? I mean, I feel like you'd remember it if it was. Or is it the one Maya was in? It's still there from when we escaped. We never really even got a good look at that. I thought that was going to be a big deal, and it wasn't. Yeah, that's interesting. So is this a different one from Mayo's elevator? Or is it the same one, it's just it never gets reused if uh, Mayo doesn't exist? Question mark. Little box in the abyss. The other is about 20 yards down. I thought the floors were fairly far apart. I didn't realize actually how far. Whoa! And then Tsugumi just pushes you in. Oh, I'm gonna die! Tsugumi suddenly gave a little push on my shoulder from behind. Are you fucking crazy? Don't push. What do you think would happen if I fell from here? If you fell, I think that you would die. Most definitely. Well, thanks, Tsugumi. Good to know you're still a bitch, even if you are more talkative. Tsugumi said it without a trace of emotion. Wow. Jeez, what do you want to go and try... Why do you want to go and try to scare me? This isn't FNAF. We don't need jump scares. Jeez. You're just a coward. Maybe, but it doesn't mean you need to scare me. 
Oh, what? What happened? Rumbling my tumbling. Scooby pulled on the doors, pushing them back to their original positions. Aw, you screwed up all the hard work me and you did in the other pathway. Just to be sure, I tapped in the elevator button a couple of times. There was no response, the lamp didn't light up. Doesn't look like it's getting any power. Yes, and the elevator shaft is, shaft is warped, so even if it was getting power, it probably couldn't move normally. Gotcha. That's right, this elevator is useless. Just like you, Takeshi. Oh, gee, thanks! Ellipses. After that, Sugumi went quiet again. Silence was the rule for a while. At least she hasn't raised any super conspiracy theories yet, which again, provides credence to my theory. Sugumi rarely talked, but she, she talked more or less than Shonen. She definitely talked more in the other pathway, though, than in the other pathway. She only said the minimum necessary. I thought that maybe she was trying to be careful of me for some reason. I wonder what it could be. Oh, it's because, oh, she's avoiding saying too much, so I don't recognize the fact that she did actually speak very briefly when I heard her in the prologue, and when I punched, you know, when she punched me the fuck out. Anyways, I wonder what it could be. I wanted to know. Hey, why don't you tell me what happened? It's got nothing to do with you. Might have been true, but still. It's got nothing to do with me? It's got something to do with me. <laughs> uh... Wait, what are we talking about? Um, oh, uh, like nothing in particular, just the way, the reason she's being so cold to towards me, I guess? You know something I don't? Definitely. Something like what? Like about this accident? Ah, that's a big question. Like maybe something, something to do with the reason you're all quiet? That's possible. Accident. This wasn't an accident. It was on purpose, bitches. I mean, that was my theory from the beginning, and more and more reason to believe it as time goes on in the game, but you're saying it pretty upfront here. It was planned. Well, there you go. Who planned it? What do you know? Tell me. Spill your mind to me. What makes you say that? You're not surprised? Nah, maybe I know about it from another timeline. Maybe I'm just more open minded than you. Zuma mm, mm, mm. gave me a strange look. So you feel like something isn't right, too? Um, I suppose. I mean, I think we all, to an extent. Maybe, I guess. Like, everything is just too neat. Yes, good point, good point! Ellipses. We can't communicate with the outside, and our escape routes are all closed. But we've got electricity and the air conditioning still works. These were all things that were brought up in the other timeline, yes. Although I think you was the one who brought them up, isn't she? She brought them up, like, towards the end when we were having that heart-to-heart, -heart, I think. It's almost like someone trapped us here on purpose. Indeed. Hmm. <laughs> I guess you're not as dumb as you look. Or I guess you're not as dumb when uh, the player can, uh, the person control- When there's, uh, the- when the player is controlling you! Yes, that's what I meant to say. When, yeah, that's exactly. Because I'm in control of his mind, I'm putting my smart particles into him. That's that's why. But um, still, he still seems denser than at least Shonen does. Even if some of my smarts are rubbing off on him, you know, you can only help a Yosuke so much. <laughs> you can uh, you can lead a Yosuke to Juness, but you can't uh, fill in the blank. Anyways. But you can't get him to work good? I don't know. You can't get him to get you that deal you want? Zagumi's expression loosened into a slight smile. It was a provocative smile. That's just the kind of smile I want. The one I was wanting the whole time on the other pathway. What do you mean by that? I mean exactly what you said. You have a stupid face. It compliments your uh, stupid outfit. Oh, well gee, thanks. You don't look that smart. Well geez, and you don't look that nice. I'm not that nice. Well, there we go. But yeah, that's just, that's such a mean thing to say. I mean, okay, you know what? You're speaking your mind. Good, good on you. Good on you. Don't judge a book by its cover, um, but you know, it's true. We all judge people. We see someone, we think, oh, he looks smart, he looks stupid, he looks he looks bu strong, he looks weak. Even you did it. She thought Shonen is, is really wimpy at the beginning of, uh, and it's true to an extent. In, uh, Sh when Shonen had to save Yu's life in the other pathway, which may or may not have happened in this pathway, um, uh, Yu was like, really? Did you save me? You seem wimpy. Similarly, she thinks I look I look dumb, and it's true. It's just that, you know, believing that uh, is another thing, you know. Don't touch a book, even if the cover looks dumb. 
What? <laughs> and the beginning of the Sundari relationship begins. This chick is so hot. I'd love to tell her what I really think of her. She's fucking hot, right? <laughs> a thought ran through my mind. I thought that could really make me look stupid. So I rest resisted the urge. Nice one, Takeshi. Or maybe that makes you look the stupidest. This is a trap. Oh, really? Something special return to normal. Trap in what way? You probably aren't going to get out. What? No, not just you, but everyone else as well. All four of them. Um, so I understand what you mean with Coco, you and Shonen, but do you not know about Zoro, or do you? Um, regardless, what about you? Are you saying you're going to get out? Are you in on the trap? Are you a terrorist? Questions. Questions. You're all the same. What do you mean the same? Time jumpers? Like, whoa, well, whoa, well, same in what way? Fucked by the pathway diversions? Well, what about you then, Tsugumi? I... You? Yeah, I suppose I could die in a place like this. Wow. Well, at least if you're gonna be a jerk to us, you can be a jerk to yourself as well. Good thing, I guess? You know, I suppose. I mean, they say if you can't say anything nice about yourself, you're... No, that's not actually what they say. It's a completely different saying, but... Treat others the way you want to be treated. Or, I guess, treat others the way you'd be okay with being treated. I suppose is an expression that exists, maybe? Wouldn't be bad at all, I guess. If I was with you. Um, weird. Again, it's weird how open she is. I, again, putting credence to my theory of this taking place chronologically for, which is why she doesn't have all the memories, but she still seems to know something about this. Like, some kind of terrorist thing. Maybe. Maybe. Tumi looked upward. All the questions. The ceiling was covered with artificial materials. Felt oppressive. And I'm not even going to bring up the fact that she said it'd be okay to die? Wow, that's interesting. Okay, that's weird. Takeshi, you're weird. She laughed again. Can I hear it? I like her laugh. Don't even get to hear her laugh. That's lame. And she left disappearing from the corridor and I was alone. Aw, come back. You're actually being kind of nice in this pathway. You saved my life and all that, and you know how to complete bitch in this one. Aw, it's a goomy. Aw, later. We'll bone her later. Maybe. 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 Jellyfish condola, quail, situation, Tsugumi. Elevator out of order. Great. Okay, uh, infirmary next, I suppose. Infirmary. I arrived in front of the infirmary. While this was a theme park, it was also deep in the ocean and other facilities. Lemur's atmosphere was maintained using a mix of gases and an air pressure different from the outside world. It seemed that it could make some people feel ill, such as myself. <laughs> I reckon... I re... I reckoned? I, oh, I reckon. No, that's a real word. I reckoned. I'm surprised he used it. That was the reason this room was so large. Beyond the huge sliding door was a room that Shonen is in love with. He's married to the room. Uh, especially in this pathway where his memory loss is continuous. Uh, decked out elaborately in shiny new medical equipment. I thought I could have something to do with Lemur's sponsor being a major pharmaceutical company. Oh, <laughs> oh, that rings a few bells. The room was so clean and white it was nearly blinding. Did we already learn about that? I don't know, you know. It's been a trudge going through this game, so. They're, again, the minor details I'm gonna forget, so. What are you gonna do? There were two normal beds and one that looked like it was for surgery. Ooh! Oh, that's the one in the front. Was Shonen on that bed or was he on one of the others? It doesn't really matter, but. I'm curious. Actually, if he was on one of the others, maybe that's how he was sleeping with you in that one pathway. Remember that? Giggity. Mm. There's also a huge machine attached to one of them. LMRI was written on it. Lemurai? Le Lemurie? Lemurie! Maybe. Lemurie. Hmm. Lemurie. I didn't know what it was, but it looked like it was a kind of scanner. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's not a terribly terrible deduction, Takeshi. There are some smarts to that. I saw a shelf in the wall filled with medical tools and medicine. Okay. It was probably in case somebody fell ill or got injured here. It wouldn't be possible to move anyone outside, so they'd have to treat it here. Is she talking to Pee Pee? Or Mayo? Or what? I don't think there's any way out now! Oh, and there is Coco. Definitely. Even though they tried to hide it. I think I've settled on just doing a super high-pitched voice. Because doing, I don't think there's any way out now, the whole game, uh, when she's constantly there, it's going to get a little... Ugh. Ah! 
I was getting used to surprises, but the voice startled me. I didn't know who was talking. Come on, it's Coco. How do you forget that voice? Man, you're really forgetful. Somebody sure was. Minna. Everybody? Who are you talking to? Help? Did you come to help? Wait a second. Is this the conversation? Oh, shit. Is Coco, can she like jump between the two worlds? Is that why she blips sometimes? Possibly? Like she blip, it blips down to five because we're losing Coco. We're losing our access to Coco because it's blipping down to five. That's why, maybe. And it blips up to, on the other path, maybe she's the link. But then Maya also has to be a link of some kind, right? I, I think. But yeah, this conversation, I'm remembering this from the other timeline. Shonen was talking to, to Coco. Because Shonen said, like, um, there needs to be a way out. And then Coco was like, I don't think there's any way out now. And then Shonen was like, oh, let's go talk to the others. Like, I'll, I'll show you everybody. And Coco was like, everybody? And then... And then she's like, did you come to help? And Shonen's like, yeah, I'll help you. Yeah, I remember. I don't know if this is exactly correct. But roughly, at least, if it's not exact, this is very similar to the conversation Shonen had with Coco in the other timeline. That's very interesting. So maybe Coco has a link beyond just what Mayo has. In which case, what's up with Mayo? Man, oh man. It sounded like Coco, indeed. I didn't know who she was talking to. Talking to another universe version of Shonen? Is he linked over here as well? Are there two Shonens and two Cocos? And that's why it's five to seven? In that case, where's Mayo? Because she's gotta be on this side as well, if that's the case. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Couldn't tell where they were. It's probably impossible. That's another line I feel like I remember from that conversation. Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. And it was in the infirmary. Another reason I'm pretty sure this is what happened is because it was in the underside of the infirmary that Shonen and Coco were talking to each other. So if I go down to the inf other's underside, is Coco gonna be there? Talking to the other dimensions version of Shonen? Ooh boy, ooh boy, oh boy, oh boy. There's no way out anymore. She's talking way darker than she normally does when she's with the rest of us. Oh man, oh man, oh man. I, w I actually didn't see this coming, honestly. I thought I might have, like, a connection to Mayo and that would be the end of it, but this makes things more interesting, I feel. What was she saying? I wondered if something had happened to Coco. Carefully inched toward the rear of the room. Noticed a squarish hole cut on the floor. This is when I find the underside. And maybe when I find Coco, it cuts off her connection to the other side. Which would make her the time travel type person. But again, if that's the case, is PP the seventh? And if that's the case, what about Mayo? Meh. I peered down inside. Or is the other shown in the seventh? Hmm. Hmm. Questions. Inside there was a small elevator stopped. It appeared that there was another room directly below the infirmary. The voice is coming from there. Exactly. Um, this is where we use to disinfect ourselves in the other pathway. Whether or not we're going to do that in this one, I don't know. I don't know if we slept yet, so there's a good chance we still will, but... Indeed, is she there? Is she there? Are you there? Push the button. When the light... When the lift came, I jumped in. Oh boy. I sent slowly and silently. Oh shit. This could be trippy. Or it could be just normal. And maybe the trippy stuff is over now. Arrived below. I noticed that the hatch there was slightly ajar. So Liar. I remember that as well. He said, I'm gonna save you. I'm gonna help you. We're all gonna help you. And she was like, liar. I remember this. I remember all of this. Oh man, this is crazy. Because, because, because why? Because you're not in my timeline! Question mark? He's closer and open the hatch. And there she is. Who are you talking to? Oh, there you go. She's the one being crazy in this one. Okay, so she has a connection to Shonen, but other timeline Shonen. Oh man, this is... Who boy. Who boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um... Who boy. That's all I can say is who boy. Maybe it's because they're brother and sister. But then does she not have a connection to this timeline's version of Shonen? Who boy. That's all I can say is who boy. Who's that boy? Is it Shonen or is it someone else? Coco jumped as if she'd been stunned. Ooh, this could really help fill in some gaps. She'd been stung even. She was sitting on the bed. Nothing looked out of the ordinary. Takapion? That's new. Takapion. 
Again, there's that see-through-ish look because we're in a dark room, but it's not actually see-through, it's just see-through-ish. But in this case, it would be pretty fitting for it to be see-through. Takapion! That's weird. Takapion? Oh, yep, you're Takapion! Now suddenly she's all happy again. What's with the dark vibe that she gives off to Shonen in the other one? That's weird. Why are you weird to your brother, question mark? Question mark? Huh? Okay, I'm talking, Pion. Uh, you taste a bit like diabetes, you know that? I think you know that. I mean, you skirts... You is like that perfect level of cuteness, but I think you're a little bit like diabetes. Anyways, if you don't know that trope, I'm not trying to be offensive. There's just a trope. Tastes like diabetes. I think she just might taste like diabetes. Maybe. Maybe. Safe place, Pokepon. Pokepon? Pokepon. Does that have to do with the American joke? No, maybe. I don't remember. No, I don't think so. You got it? I don't think I got it. Um, I don't get it, but okay. He gets it, so that's all that matters, question mark? Oh, 17. There's that arc number, 17. I know the Nineko song, 17. Nineko, like, cats? Sounds like a cat song. Some kind of children's show or cat? Question mark. It's not Pion Pion. It's Pokapon, right? Or is it? Maybe in her. Maybe in the alternate dimension. Maybe from Shonen's dimension, the show is different. Has Pokapon? No, has Pion Pion instead of Pokapon. <laughs> yes, yes, but Pion Pion's cuter. <laughs> but, but oh, sad face. Huh? Coco. Oh, Coco. Hello, Coco. Coco pointed to herself, she said her name. Yes? Takapion! Um... I do not understand, but okay. And she pointed at me. And Pee Pee is three years old. Three years. That might be important to know. So Pee Pee is three years. Which, if dogs age in years of seven, which may or may not be true, depends, then that makes, her, makes the dog 21, which is half of 42, and he mentioned that Shonen could be 42, so that could be potentially important, maybe. <laughs> Puppy face peeked out from under the bed. So why is this important? <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, you're tasting a little bit like diabetes. Oh, nice to meet you too. Uh, uh, is this a reference to that show that you're talking about? Haven't we already introduced ourselves? Uh... I thought that was an in-joke I wasn't getting. Was it just an out-joke that I wasn't getting? I turned upstairs with Coco. So you're calling me Takapion, is that it? Is, is that what I have to deal with in this playthrough? <laughs> yep, you're Takapion. Great, thanks. Ruff! <laughs> is even Pee Pee calling me Takapion? Yep, of course. Alright, I got it. So, who are you talking with, Coco? I'm just gonna roll with her crazy? Sure. You ask questions. I'm just like, sure. What? Oh, do you not realize? Do you re do you really not realize? Also, the way you said what has to, goes in line with the pion pion. I think. Wasn't someone just in that room? Uh, do you also do you not actually fully realize? Maybe shown it. Well, actually, I guess there'd be some sense to that. Shown has this psychic link to you and thinks there's something going on, but doesn't fully understand. You don't fully understand there's a link. You know that th like there is a link, and you're you're doing the link, and there's a dark presence in you. Is that like an alternate personality? Or I always want alternate personalities, but um. I expect and want, but, um, yeah, do you not realize? Mm -hmm. Nope, nobody was there. Or maybe you're hiding it. Maybe you're an evil mastermind. Maybe you're hiding the fact that there's a psychic connection. Maybe you are fucking with him. Possibly. You little evil fucker. Is that it? You're a skull fucker. I was just playing around with Pee-Pee. Are you fucking with me? Are you fucking with Shonen and me? Are you fucking with both of us? Is that what's up? Where's Mayo? What did you do with her? I like her better. Where is she? Where is she? Oh my gosh, you little... Uh, I can't help but think you're a little gremlin now. Gosh. Pion, Pion, Taki, Pion, Pion. Oh man. What would I be thinking if I had played this one first? I mean, I already had crazy thoughts about it when I played the other one first. But man, all the questions, like... 
Oh, it's like the kind of replay replayability you can't really experience. Just that's again why I really want to see a blind LP done the other way if I can find one. I'm gonna wait till I beat the game, of course. But oh, that's something I'm very interested in. Whatever, ellipses. Gosh, I didn't think Coco would lie to me, but no, of course she would. She's a little devil, Satan spawn. She said that I remember the beginning of the game when she was counting to five. She said the devil, Satan version of five. And she even said that there was five times when, she, when then she said, I lied, there's one! You gotta be. I don't know if you're doing it willingly or not, but you seem fucking evil and crazy and gremlinish. I don't like her. I don't trust her. There wasn't anyone else around. Firmer situation, not fucking even close to normal. Alright, the warehouse. There was a room with no sign indicating what it was for. Okay. Oh, I never really did anything in there, did I, in the other one? Like, I went in there, and Maya was in there, in the other pathway. But we never really, um... That never really went anywhere in the other pathway, I don't think. Like, yeah, because that was a really short scene that happened. Yeah, this room. Didn't do much with this one. It appeared it was a warehouse of some kind. There was uh, loads of boxes made of reinforced plastic all piled up. There was a push cart and boxes too big to carry, and some long and narrow that a person could just hold. There were all kinds of marks, symbols, and letters of the boxes, and I couldn't make sense of them. There was a bunch of round carbon capsules and drum-like looking objects. I wonder what was inside them. So is there going to be anybody here? We've already went through everybody, so maybe not. Unless we get our connection with Mayo, question mark. If that's even a thing. Although if it is, and, and you know, Shonen has a connection with Coco, then you'd think maybe Mayo in the other timeline would have a connection. So I'm starting to doubt it, but it'd be weird if there's no... Mayo at all, I feel. Eh, we'll see. I wonder what went inside them. Figured it, I didn't really need to know. Because we know she's, she exists. We saw her uh, briefly in the prologue. She had, so she had to be there. And man, it'd be really frustrating if she, we didn't see her at all if I had picked this pathway first. Because I remember I was, I was waiting. I wanted to hear her voice. I, I was like, th that was back when I was going to maybe turn them off. I was thinking, I'm not going to turn them off until I hear the voice. If I had picked the catchy's pathway first, like, it would have been a long fucking time before I heard her voice, probably. Anyways, I didn't really need to know. Didn't know what. What was inside them? Yeah. There's a hissing noise coming from somewhere. Oh, interesting. Looking for the sound led me to an air conditioner that was in a bad shape, but still working. On the room ceiling was a crane, complete with guide rails. Okay. One container was still suspended from above. It looked like it had been abandoned in the middle of work. And then it dropped on me and I died. Oops! Game over. No one had any time to clean up. So I don't have to be the manly, womanly man to do it. Nah. Um, he cooks. Does he clean? Everyone had fled, fled at once. Is there anybody here? I called out once, but nobody answered. Why would there be? Everybody else is somewhere else, right? Ellipses. There's no reason anybody to be here. There's no reply. We're our situation normal. Okay. Now, took my PDA from my pocket and looked at the time. Oh no! We're only two minutes late, but still, we were late. Who's we? Who's we? Why you say we? You mean you? I charged where the security office. You said we. Are you talking about me? Do you know I'm left playing? Are you being like super crazy intuitive? Or are you just referring to the player and you know, no, you don't know we're left playing? But regardless, that's creepy. Unless it's just a typo, but. <laughs> Coco and people were close behind me. Oh, that's why it's we. Okay. Went in through the sliding door. 